Okay, now that I know the difference between an ODE and a PDE, now I can go ahead and introduce the notations that I will be using throughout this class. Okay, um, what I mean in notation is I keep writing this dy dx. Did you see that? That's actually a specific notation, and that notation is called let's actually write here notation. And the first one is the one that I personally like to use, and I'll talk about why in a moment. Okay, v now this I just write it to you. This is dy dx, or I can have I don't know d cube y dx cube, or in general terms I can have d and y dx n. So this is the Leibniz notation. So it's a bit longer than some of the others that I'm going to introduce, but one thing that I want to highlight right off the bat is I, I clearly see what my dependent variable is, what is my independent variable. Okay, if you are wanting to write this a bit shorter, what you can do is you can write a prime notation. I'm almost certain you've seen this in your undergraduate classes or the undergraduate classes. So it's y prime, y third. We're not going to write y, you know, like this. We don't do that. Okay. Instead, we start writing y to the n after, you know, the fourth and above. Okay. So let's rewrite an equation that I had before with Leibniz uh, notation. So let's say this. Um, dx cubed plus 2 dy dx minus, I think I called it 6, but it doesn't really matter for our purposes, and I call this an ODE, right? So let's write this in prime notation. So this is going to be y, 1, 2, 3, plus 2y prime minus 6y is equal to 0. Much nicer, right? Let's be honest. This is much better than this, correct? Um, what I've experienced it, though in real life is that whenever I have like a shortcut, like it looks really nice, there's usually a disadvantage associated with it. And this is one of those cases as well. What is the disadvantage over here? Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go ahead and get rid of this. So now the question is, what is the independent variable? What is the dependent variable in here? Can this be dy dt? Right? Or is it with respect to the x? Right? So this information is lost. If I use prime notation, I don't know which one is right. I, I really don't know which one is the most appropriate one. Okay? So that is a disadvantage of using the prime notation. Be careful about it. This is the two common notations that we use with ODEs, but there's a third one. Let me write it over here as well. It is the Newton's dot notation. But this went, goes one step about the prime notation because I said I'm kind of confused with what is the independent variable in here. The Newton's dot notation is only written with, with, with an uh, independent variable of t. So that's the only way that I write this independent variable. Okay? So that's so for instance if I have d square y dt time square is equal to y double dot like that. Okay? That's an example. If I have our let's call uh, you know s but it's always t as notation. And I will also introduce a notation. It's called the subscript notation. But one thing that we need to be careful about is this is typically used with PDs, not ODs. And you'll see why in a minute if I write it. Um, and the good thing about it is it indicates my independent variable. Let's write a PD del square u del x square is equal to del square u del y square minus del u del t as an example. Okay, why is this a PD not an ODE? Well, you can see x, y, t, which u is the dependent variable, right? So this is a cl clearly a PD. So I can write this this way. u subscript, that's where the name comes from, xx is equal to u y y minus u t. So how many I write over here determines the order of it. The way that I write, you see, x, x, y, y, as I have the first order over here, I just write t. Okay? The good thing about the subscript notation, and I do use this, 
is that it's very clear what I'm talking about with respect to the dependent and the independent variable. Okay, so far so good. What we did was we classified the DE, whether it's an ODE or PDE. Then after introduce that, I introduce some notations how to express an ODE and PDE. Now I'm going to do another classification, but this time around I'm going to do the classification by order. Okay, classification by order. Um, so basically this is actually fairly straightforward, except I'm going to give you a challenging question in a minute. But the order of uh, either PDE or ODE is the order of the highest derivative is equal to the order of either a PDE or ODE. You will decide that. Okay. So the, I look at the highest derivative. What is the order of that? And that would be the order of the equation itself. Okay. Let me give you a fairly uh, straightforward question to you. Uh, well, d square y, x square plus 2x is equal to so what is the order of this? Well, I know you. I'm hearing almost what you're saying. It's the second order, right? So that's that. You know, this is uh, doable, All right? So I'm gonna now try to look at this. How about this? Let me write it. Then I'll talk. Five square plus six y is equal to zero. I'm making this up. So this is the tenth, right? This is the five. So the square of it, that will be the tenth order, right? That will be wrong. No, this is the fifth order. I'm looking at the, you know, you need to be careful of the definition. Order of the highest derivative. What is the order of the highest derivative? It's the square of it. I get that part, but it's still the fifth order. Okay, so this is called the fifth order ODE. Okay, from the same logic, I can try to fool you one more. Let's do this. dx cubed plus 2 times dy dx to the power of 4 is equal to e to the minus x as an example, right? Um, so what is the order of it? It is the fourth order, would be the wrong answer, right? Because this is the fourth power of the first order, but rather I have over here a third order. So from this logic, I'm going to get myself a third order of the e. Very good. So we finished the classification by order. And again, I don't see much issues from this classification by order after I explain this way. Okay. So everybody kind of gets it. Next, what I want to do is I want to look at this several forms of representing DEs. Okay. The first one, um, it's kind of specific to only the first order, but it's called the differential form of a first order. O D E. And it can be written like that. M X comma Y DX plus N X comma Y DY is equal to zero. Can you write it this way? Absolutely. You see I can move this DY. I can move this DX down here. You know, I can organize this so I get myself a nice uh, function. So yeah, this is makes sense. And actually please be note that I will use this differential form to solve first order differential equations when time comes, okay? Another form is called the general form of, this time around I'm going to write this for the nth order ODE, this can be written for generalized, okay? So here's how it's going to look, f, x, y, y prime, what, well I just said it, I was going to ask what notation is it, but y prime is what I said, so prime notation, so I go all the way y to the power of n, is equal to zero. Okay, so can I write an end or the differential equation this way? Absolutely, and I'll talk about this as well. We do use this, and another form that we use is called the normal form of and order ODE. So this is now is going to be written like that. I like to highlight that the right hand side of this is zero, right? So now I don't have any zero anymore. So this is the nth order of it to the power of n. It will be a function of x, y. The rest of is very similar except y n minus 1. I'd like you to look here and here. Do you see the difference? Okay. 
So basically what I do between the general and normal form is I take out this term and I represent it this way instead of saying this, do you see? So it's not that different from one another, general or normal form. We use them all and we can use them interchangeably. We can simply convert that from the general form to the normal form as desired. Okay, okay. this may get confusing so I'm going to solve a basic question to illustrate how to look at, for instance, differential and normal as an example. Okay. So let me give you a, a simple function because we're just getting started. I don't want to scare you so you don't drop my course. 5x y prime plus y is equal to x. Obviously, prime notation is what I'm using. The question is, well, let's first start with this. What is the normal form of it? And what is the differential form of it? Okay, that's the question that I'm, I'm looking at over here. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this this way. 5x dy dx. Leibniz notation is much more straightforward for me. Okay, obviously I'm assuming this is, um, although it's not clear, I'm assuming this is x. Good, but what am I trying to achieve? So let's look at the normal form. Here's what it says. I will have, what is the order of this equation? It's a first order. Right. Uh, also, you can get a hint that as I'm asking you differential form, that is only defined for first order, so I have to, right? But anyways, um, so I'm looking over here. So how I want to represent this like this, dy dx is equal to f of x comma y. I don't have y prime and about y because y prime is right actually this, right? So this is how I need to express this. Is this a bit big deal? I don't think so. Let's do it. dy dx. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate this. So it's going to look like this. 5x dy dx. And I'm going to move that y to the right hand side of the equation. So it's going to be x minus y. Let's divide both sides by 5x. Assuming x is not 0. Um, I'm going to get myself x minus y divided by 5x, right? So this is pretty much it then. You see the difference? You see? So now this is the normal form. So I, I accomplished that. You can see it's not a big deal. Normal form. Let's look at the differential form. But before that, let's look at the definition of it. You can see I need to write this dx times some function plus dy times some function is equal to 0. Okay, I don't think it's terrible. Let's take a look at it. Um, where should I start? Well, why, why don't we start here? Okay, why don't we start here? So you can see over here, if I start from there, so differential form will be 5x times dy is equal to x minus y times dx, right? I simply move this dx to this side of the equation. And then I need to do one last step, and that is 5x dy. If I move it to the other side, it's going to be a minus sign, but let's write it this way, y minus x. Do you see what I did there? I just swapped this so I get a positive sign. dx is equal to 0. So if I look at the above equation that I have, this whatever in front of dy is called the n, right? So this n and whatever is in front of x is called m. So then from here you can see that this is going to be my n, this is going to be my m. So that's it. Thank you for watching this video. 